And so I figured we'd give one of these a try this fall, kind of show people how to grow them out in this, because a lot of people, all their seed starting supplies are based around. What's up, Lazy Dog fam? Hope all y'all having a wonderful day. It is Wednesday, July 26th here in South Georgia. And on today's video, we're gonna continue along with our fall gardening chat. On the last two videos, we talked about some fail-proof warm season crops that you can replant in the fall. And then we talked about all the cool season veggies that we can plant in the fall. And on this video, I wanted to talk about what you should transplant, what you should direct seed, and give you my kind of tentative schedule for cool season fall planting. And that way you can kind of get an idea when we'll be planting stuff and use that schedule to kind of figure out maybe when you should be planting some of this stuff. So let's jump right in and talk about what we'll be transplanting versus what we'll be direct seeding as far as cool season veggies go. And we're just going to talk about the ones that we mentioned on the last video, the ones that we're actually growing down here. I'm sure there's some cool season veggies that are not on this list, but we're just talking about the ones that you'll be seeing us plant here in the next few months. And as we go through this what to transplant list, I will mention a few things here that you could transplant or direct seed just depending on what varieties you're planting. So most of your brassicas, you're going to want to transplant those. Things like broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, cauliflower, whether you're growing your own plants or going to a store and buying plants, those four you definitely want to transplant. And then we have mustard. Now, I'll transplant mustard because we grow that Savannah mustard variety. The seeds are a little more expensive than, say, some open pollinated southern mustard variety you get at your local feed and seed store. So I don't like to waste those seeds because they are a little bit more pricey. That's why we transplant our mustard. But there are plenty of gardeners around this area that would just till them up a little spot. They'll go to the feed and seed store, buy them a little pound bag of that cheap mustard seed, broadcast it out there, and they've got them a nice little plot of mustard for the fall. So depending on what seeds you're growing, you may want to transplant or you may just want to throw them out there and rake them in the soil. And the same thing kind of applies with collards. So with our collards, I like to grow them as transplants. I like to get a nice even spacing along my row about a foot apart because I crop my collard leaves and the plants stay in the ground a long time, you know, usually five or six months or so. But there are also plenty of people, just like the mustard, they'll till them up a spot, go to the feed and seed store, buy them a cheap pound of Vates collard seed or something like that, broadcast them out there, and they'll do a single cut with their collards. So you can direct seed them or you can transplant them. I prefer to transplant them. And then next on the transplant list, we have kale. I like to transplant that for the same reason I like to transplant the collards. We do occasionally grow kale as a cover crop for our chickens and get some cheaper seed and just kind of broadcast it out there. You can do that with kale, but I like to transplant it. That way I get some nice even spacing there because once again, those plants are in the ground for a long time. And then we have lettuce. So we mostly grow head lettuces here. We don't grow a lot of leaf lettuce. If you're growing some leaf lettuce, you can take a raised bed or a spot in your in-ground garden and just sprinkle a bunch of seeds out there. Have you a nice dense mat of lettuce that you can cut and cut several times. We grow the head lettuce, so I like a more precise spacing with that. So we always grow our lettuce from transplants. Rutabagas are another one that can go either way. I know a lot of people that will go get them a little cheap bag of those American purple top rutabaga seeds and just direct seed them, but I prefer to transplant mine. And then the last one on the what to transplant list here would be celery. I'd always recommend transplanting celery. That stuff takes forever to germinate and get going. It will spend almost as much time in the greenhouse forming a nice viable transplant as it will in the ground. So you definitely want to transplant your celery. Now you'll notice I didn't mention any of the alliums like onions and leeks. We do indeed transplant those, but we'll get to those at the end of the video. So as you can see, most of the cool season veggies we grow are transplanted. There are a few that we direct seed. Those would include carrots, parsnips, spinach. If you're growing beets, direct seed those as well. We direct seed all those because they are planted so 
thick. Instead of planting them in kind of a linear row, we plant them in a band. We scatter the seeds in the band. We want them planted really, really densely. That's why we direct seed them. You couldn't get them planted that thick if you transplanted them. All right, so now let's get into our planting schedule a little bit here for the stuff we like to transplant. We have to plan ahead, start those seeds so the transplants will be ready when we want to get them in the ground. And then for the stuff that we like to direct seed, it's more waiting on the soil to cool down enough in the fall to get good germination. So if you didn't know, we're in zone 8B down here in South Georgia, and typically I'm aiming to get most of these transplants in the ground, say late September, early October. Now that can vary from year to year. Some years we get fall early, some years we have a late summer and it stays hot well into mid-October. I don't like to put a lot of these cool season transplants in the ground when it's still really hot outside because you'll lose a lot of them during the day when it's really, really hot. Even if you're pouring the water to them, sometimes they just don't like those late summer temperatures. So I'm waiting on those temperatures to break, kind of seeing when that's going to happen, and that's when we'll try to get them in the ground. That's why I don't have a definitive date. I just say late September, early October. As we're growing these transplants in the greenhouse, I can push those transplants if I want by stepping up my fertilization, or I can kind of back off my fertilization and slow them down a little bit. So if come mid-September, it looks like, okay, things are gonna get cool pretty soon here. I'll speed up those transplants. That way we can go ahead and get them in the ground. If summer's lingering around for a while, I'll back off the fertilization, slow those transplants down a little bit. That way they don't get root bound in the trays and then they'll still be okay to plant maybe a couple weeks later. Now the exception of this would be if you're utilizing shade cloth or maybe your garden spot has some nice partial shade on it, you might can get away with putting these cool season transplants in the ground sooner because they won't suffer as much as they would say being in the direct sun like most of our garden plots are. Now with the exception of the celery, most of these things that we're going to transplant will take say anywhere from four to six weeks to form a viable transplant after we drop a seed in our seed starting trays. We can control that a little bit like I mentioned earlier by really ramping up the fertilization. We can speed them up if we want to. We can also slow them down if we want to, but it's good to figure about four to six weeks getting a nice viable transplant. So if we want to get these transplants in the ground, say late September, early October, and we know it's going to take about four to six weeks to grow those out, that means we're going to need to get going with our seed starting here pretty soon, say early to mid-August. Now if you've got a pretty small garden, just a few containers or a few raised beds, you might be better off just going and buying a few plants at one of your local stores. But if you've got a larger garden, buying plants like that can get pretty expensive so it's better to grow your own plants you can also control the health of the plants a little bit better control your timing a little bit better and in my opinion fall seed starting is a lot easier than spring seed starting we don't need heat mats it's plenty hot enough sometimes it can be too hot i've seen lettuce not germinate because it was too hot in our greenhouse but we don't need heat mats, we don't need humidity domes, we really just need some seed starting mix, a tray. If you're growing indoors, you're probably going to need some lights. But given it's nice and warm outside still, you can a lot of times just grow these on your porch and be just fine. You don't necessarily have to grow them inside. Now you can grow your fall transplants in some recycled four inch pots you may have. You can grow them in Dixie cups. We like to grow ours in these heavy duty seed starting trays. If you've been watching the channel for a while, you know I'm a big fan of these PropTech trays here just because they're so sturdy and durable and basically last a lifetime. But I recently purchased one of these from Bootstrap Farmer. Kind of the same concept as this PropTech tray, just a little bit different design, but it's equally as sturdy as this PropTech tray. Now this one here is smaller. This one has the standard 1020 footprint and so I figured we'd give one of these a try this fall kind of show people how to grow them out in this because a lot of people all their seed starting supplies are based around a 1020 tray that's kind of the standard tray out there this one is I think 26 by 13 so I figured we'd do at least a few plants in one of these show people how they grow maybe compared to this because most people are working with a 1020 setup as opposed to this larger setup 
So when we begin fall seed starting here in the next week or two, we'll be sure to walk you all through every step of the process. Now let's talk about our direct seeding schedule a little bit. And like I mentioned earlier, this has a lot to do with waiting on the soil temps to cool down enough for these seeds to germinate. This stuff that we direct seed doesn't like really warm soil temps and it will not germinate well in really warm soils. So let's take carrots and parsnips for example. I usually wait till early to mid October to direct seed those. They like soil temps in the mid 70s, maybe the low 70s. If you got soil temps in the 80s, you're probably not going to get very good germination. So that's why we wait until then to direct seed our carrots. And the same concept applies with the spinach, although we've got to wait on the soils to get even cooler for the spinach. You don't know how many messages we get in the fall and winter months, people asking why didn't their spinach germinate. Spinach is pretty easy to grow once you can get it to germinate. And a lot of times it's because they planted it when the soil was still too warm. We have to wait all the way until say early November to direct seed spinach down here. You really want your soil temps consistently in the 60s for some good spinach germination. If that soil's too hot, it's not going to germinate very well at all. So that's why we have to wait until November when those soil temps get in the 60s. And usually at that point, if we water those seeds in good, it comes up pretty fast. And lastly, let's talk about alliums a little bit. We'll be talking a lot more about onions, garlic, and leeks over the next few months. But I figured I'd go ahead and give you my tentative schedule. So for onions and leeks, which we transplant, we're going to aim for an in-ground date of, say, early November. Early to mid-November. We're a little bit flexible with that, but ideally early November. So that means I'm going to start my onion seeds and my leek seeds in my greenhouse around mid-September. That usually gives me enough time to grow out a nice little onion plant to go in the ground with come early November. And then as far as our garlic goes, we don't need to grow out a transplant or anything for that. We just put the little garlic clove in the ground. And we usually try to do that sometime in November. We're not in a huge hurry to get our garlic in the ground. We try to get everything else settled, prioritize everything else. And then whenever we get around to the garlic sometime in November, we'll get it in the ground. And the last thing I wanted to talk about are these little units right here. We've had a lot of people asking where they could get some of these. We finally have some. You've heard us call them Cajun multiplying onions in the past, but they're actually called Louisiana evergreen shallots. So some people call these perennial onions, some people call them multiplying onions, but they're technically a shallot. If you've been following along closely, you know we got some of these from Cajun Bee last year, planted them in one of our fire ring raised beds, pulled them up earlier this year, split them apart because they do multiply, and replanted them in our larger raised bed plot. Now we'll talk a lot more about these on an upcoming video. I just want to go ahead and mention it since we have them on the website now. If you go to our website, lazydogfarm.com, look under the garden seed section, you'll see Louisiana evergreen shallots there. We do have a good bit of information about growing these and harvesting and dividing these on that product page. But like I said, we'll also cover some of that in an upcoming video. So I hope you enjoyed the video today and all the videos we've done this week on fall gardening. If you're in zone 8B, you should be able to follow our schedule pretty closely and be successful. If you're north of us, you're going to want to get started sooner than we do. And if you are north of us and an experienced fall gardener, please share in the comments below kind of your tentative schedule. That way the beginner fall gardeners that are watching can learn from you and learn kind of when they need to get started. And as always, you can find our affiliate links and coupon codes in the description below. Don't forget to go check out our website, LazyDogFarm.com, where you can find those Louisiana evergreen shallots I talked about earlier. And if you missed the last video where we talked about some of our favorite cool season varieties to grow for fall and what we're growing this year, you can see that right here. We'll break down every variety we're growing for every vegetable we mentioned. So check that out, and we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm.